Welcome to Miniature Steam Hack Sins and Tips Part 24, making a new slide valve and fitting boiler banding. But before I start the video, I'm just going to show you the progress so far on my new recording studio. This is a music production suite, and I've bought some more speakers. And if anyone's interested, these speakers are Tannoy speakers, pretty much like the last set I had, but smaller. Here's a shot of the Yamaha O2R mixer desk, which is very old and very good. And here's a shot of a couple of my keyboards. The top one is a Roland System 8 and it's really good indeed. The bottom keyboard is exceptional. I have two of these. This is a Yamaha Tyros 4. And if any of my Patreon supporters have a Tyros 4 and would like a set of my special patches for live use, I will gladly send you a copy free of charge. This is a really nice keyboard that I use in the studio and its name suggests what it is. The sound is positively brutal. And now, without further ado, it's on with the show. In the clip currently running, I'm comparing the old valve with the piece of gunmetal I'm about to machine. When you're doing a job like this, it's a really good idea not to rush it. Don't be frightened of the cutting tool, it's very nasty, but provided you keep your fingers out of the way, you shouldn't have a problem. The idea of using this tool is to make the block square, so now I have one known flat surface. And now that I have this one flat surface, it's time to turn the piece over in the machine vise. By using a suitable piece of packing that I also know is level, I can remove some metal from the other side, and we end up with two surfaces that are fully parallel. This clip shows me tapping the piece of gun metal with a soft-faced hammer. This is just to make sure that the piece is held properly in the machine vise. You can tell by the sound, but it does take a bit of practice to hear it. As a general rule, if you're taking a deep cut, traverse slowly. If you're taking a shallow cut, you can traverse a little quicker. But please, not as quick as this. This video is speeded up just because the process is very slow. The speed that you can go at is really governed by the strength of the milling machine. But do be careful. If you break a tool, not a facing cutter like this, but an ordinary milling tool, it can be really bad. I once did that. The milling cutter snapped and it whistled past my ear and embedded itself in the concrete wall of my workshop. No such events this time. Here's a finished block. What I'm doing here is rubbing the block up and down on a piece of 400 grade wet or dry sandpaper. This removes all the sharp edges. And when I check the dimensions with the ruler, I'm quite pleased. It's three quarters of an inch by one and a quarter inches long. Any proper engineers need to turn off immediately because what I'm doing here is I'm laying the finished part on top of the drawing. As the drawing is one to one, it's showing me that my piece is the right size. This has never bothered me. I've done it on most of the things that I've built when I've had a drawing that's one to one. When building model aircraft, and I've built plenty of those, you put the plan down on a piece of board, and then you pin the pieces of balsa to the board and glue everything together, and finally remove the pins and remove the piece of aeroplane, and it's the right size. So unashamedly, I show you how to do this. In this clip, I'm showing that I have already cut two pieces of brass banding and I'm seeing whether they fit around the cylinder. The brass banding will, of course, need bending strategically to fit around the cylinder. And because the mahogany cladding is stuck to an uneven cast iron cylinder, you may find that one side of the cylinder's external diameter may be slightly less than the other. So it's a good idea to have a bit of a play with the brass banding to make sure the pieces that you're using are the right length for the position on the cylinder where they are going to be. And then, it's time to use the ruler and start marking out. I'm scribing a line half an inch in from each end. I'm going to drill holes here and tap them 6BA. So it's very important that none of these holes that I'm about to drill in the cylinder break into the existing stud holes. That would not be too smart. So if you're doing a job like this, always have a look before you do it. I'm quite close to the stud hole, but not close enough to break into it. If you look on the bench at the moment, you'll see there are two pieces of boiler banding with holes drilled in them. And the secret is to drill holes in both ends of the boiler banding. This shot shows me tapping two 6BA holes in one side of the cylinder only. I'm not going to tap them in the other side until I've fitted the boiler banding to this side. Then the boiler banding goes around the cylinder and I can see where the holes in the banding end up at the other side. But don't forget, they need to be half an inch in from the end of the cylinder and definitely avoiding studs. So if the studs are not quite in the right place, there may be a problem. But I did check this first. So everything should be fine. 
Be very careful when using small taps such as 6BA. They will snap off quite easily. Taps of this size will break if you force them. So never force them is the answer. And as you thread, keep backing off to clear the swarf. If you snap the tap off in the work, this is a very bad thing to do. This is quite a fiddly job and it's not a job I particularly like doing. I've done it many times around steam cylinders and around condensers and other pieces of steam equipment. So I'm quite experienced, I suppose. In one of the recent episodes, I did mention the fact that someone had written in and complained to me saying he didn't like the way I was making fun about people with mental health problems. It was only the old joke about I used to be schizophrenic, but I'm all right now and so am I and so am I and so am I, etc. Sometimes I get really concerned about my own mental health. I'm sure quite a few of us do, but I never take life that seriously, so I can generally carry on. But last week, I saw an advert in the paper that said, do you have mental health problems? Why not phone this number? So I thought, well, that's a good idea. I'll do that. And it was free. So I rang the number and it rang for a while. And then I got the usual menu and a voice came on the line and said, hello, and thank you for calling the Mental Health Institute. These menus drive me insane. You know, press one for this and two for this and three for this. So the voice continued and launched into the menu. If you are OCD... Just press 1 repeatedly. If you have multiple personalities, press 2, 3, 4 and 5. If you are delusional, press 7 and your call will be transferred to the mothership. While I'm telling you about this mental health institute, it's just to cover up the fact that this part is very boring. You can see exactly what I'm doing. I don't need to narrate. I am now putting a bolt into a hole. But as you can see, I've cut down some very nice brass 6BA bolts which I think will look better than just steel hexagon bolts in there. Then the voice on the phone said, If you are paranoid, you do not need to press anything. We know who you are, we know what you want, and we know where you live. That one was a bit scary, but as I'm not paranoid, it didn't bother me. This one was a bit strange, though. If you suffer from low self-esteem, please hang up, because all our operators are far too busy to talk to you. That's enough of my warped sense of humour for the moment. It's back to the steam engine. This is a far more sensible thing to do. So as you can see, I've put on one of the bands with these very pretty little 6BA bolts. And now I'm removing the 6BA bolt so I can bend the boiler band a little bit more. This will hold it tighter to the cylinder. This, of course, is not the final fitting of the bands. I need to paint the cylinder and I need to give the mahogany another good rub down and some more varnish. Here I'm having a quick look to see how the band's fitting to the cylinder, and it's looking okay. Still a little bit of adjustment needed, but it will be fine at the end of the job, as you will see. When I drilled the holes in the boiler banding, I drilled them slightly oversized for 6BA, so there is a little bit of longitudinal adjustment available, and this adjustment, plus being able to bend the band wherever I need to bend it, and the fact that there will be more varnish on the cylinder, the band will stick to this varnish and remain in one position all the time. In this clip, I'm measuring and marking out for the final hole, which I'm going to drill and tap in the steam chest. I'm once again being very careful not to break through into the hole for the steam chest studs. This shows the initial fitting, and it's not looking too bad. A bit of adjustment needed. When the cylinder is painted and the mahogany is varnished and the brass bands are polished up, it will look okay. I am pleased to announce that this engine is now nearing completion. All that's left to do now is to machine the drop arm for the valve gear, paint the cylinder, put it all together after shortening the studs. Yes, I'm stalling on that one. So I'll put the cap on for now, and thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website. Click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you will find it very easy to find other videos that you may like to watch.